What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odi J and we are locked in with two episodes left of The Madness on Netflix. Muncie is working overtime because he needs to find out who Julia is and why Detective Franco took himself out. Now, I'm pretty sure that stress was all on his shoulder and especially since the FBI wasn't allowing him to pursue this actual case, he probably said, you know what? I'm done with it. I've done enough. But before we jump into this and we break down episode seven, if you like murder mysteries, if you like trying to solve cases then the madness on netflix is probably a show for you and we've been doing eight episodes for eight days and this is episode seven so if you like this kind of content hit that subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload make sure you hit that like button we're on that road to 75,000 subscribers but let's go ahead and jump into it this is episode seven the madness starting off the episode we see muncie getting a phone call now we don't know who it's from. We know that he took Lori's car because he didn't have one. And we also know that Agent Franco had unalived himself. So after this phone call, they have some somber music playing. He goes to the house and Elena is there. Now we haven't seen them be this close in a long time, but she knows he's down and out. So she gives him a kiss. The next morning he wakes up in the bed and he's realizing, man, this was a good thing. I kind of miss my ex-wife. But he goes downstairs and he starts looking at a few things following up on his investigative actions. He sees a video of Robert Kuntnick, who is in charge of everything. Remember, Stu was a billionaire, but this is the billionaire of all billionaires. So right now he's trying to piece together what exactly is his tie, especially with Julia. Because remember, Julia tried to come to the hospital and unalive him. Now, when we go over to Julia's house, we see that she's following everything that's going on. She got Discord, she got Instagram, she got phones tapped. She's listening to Demetrius's phone calls. She's looking at his text messages. She also hacked into Elena's phone. So she's listening to any and everything that Muncie and his family is doing because she's still after him. Her number one priority is taking him out. And we see from this information, Julia knows that Muncie and Demetrius, they actually left. Now they went down to go get some donuts and some breakfast. You know how it is. Your life's in danger, but you gotta go get your nutrients. So she shows up to Elena's house and when she's in the kitchen, she has a gun and she's asking, where are they at? Where's Munchie and your son at? I don't care about your son. I just want him. Now, of course, Elena, she's <laughs> overpowered and doesn't have any weapons. So she's kind of nervous. But as soon as Julia finds out exactly where they are, she calls him. Y'all got to go right now. Demetrius tells his dad, hey, I got my driver's permit. Let me drive. You hop in the back seat so it'd be harder for Julia to find us. Well, it comes to find out Demetrius doesn't really have his driver's permit. So he's driving, but he ain't driving the fastest. He kind of nervous. His dad's in the back seat, and what does he see? Julia then caught up with him. So he's telling Demetrius, speed up, man. Demetrius like, huh? He's looking all around. He's like, continue to look at the road, but speed up a little bit. We in a low high speed chase right now. They end up ducking off. They go around two semis. They get hit on the side. Julia's in hot pursuit. They decide to pull off into this building. Now they switch seats and <laughs> Demetrius got to get in the passenger seat because we need a real driver now. And Julia, she slows down because she's lost and she's trying to see where they at. And all we see is a T-bone coming out of this building. Muncie knocks her car out. Right now she's dazed, confused. The car don't start and they drive off. Now they need a new vehicle and they need to lay low for a moment. So Demetrius, we know he smokes a little bit of reefer here and there. He has a homeboy by the name of Polo. He's like, man, we can go meet up with our dog Polo. He lives over in Trenton and he's connected. He can get us almost anything we need. Now, when we get there, we know that Demetrius smokes a little bit of weed and Muncie's a little iffy. He's like, man, how do you know him? But they known each other since playing soccer. And Polo, he stopped playing soccer because in the hood, you got to play football or basketball. Soccer just ain't going to cut it, even though soccer and baseball are where the big bucks are. But he's supposed to be trying to get them a vehicle so they can pick back up where they left off and go solve this case. Polo ends up getting them a vehicle. We hear Muncie and Demetrius talking. And he's like, I know you guys want me to go to a private school, but this is where I'm more comfortable at. Plus that private school, you don't even have any friends, Dad. But Polo gets the car and he also gives them a baseball bat because if they get pulled over, you won't get in trouble for having a baseball bat in the vehicle. If you have a gun, a gat, then yes, you will. So this bat is minimum protection, but it's more protection than nothing. Julia has a concussion. She doesn't know where Muncie is at, so she has to call Robert. But before she does, she's actually looking at some last minute flights 
to Rome, $200, $400. She's trying to get up out the country because she's been failing. Now she ends up calling Robert and saying, we need backups. We need some other options to try to get them. He says, no, I paid you to do a job. That's your job. Matter of fact, you have 48 hours to unalive Muncie and stop him from talking about what he knows or we're coming after you. And she knows what they're capable of because if he hired her, then he could definitely hire somebody higher than her to go get her. Now we get a moment of truth. Everyone goes over to Isaiah's house, well, to his office, because we know Isaiah can make things happen. He knows people. He knows people that knows people that knows people that can get you out of some trouble. But everyone starts calling Muncie out. And Isaiah's like, you're acting just like your dad and your family needs to hear this. Your dad let his ego get in the way. And that's why he unalived that guy. And right now, you're letting your ego get in the way and you could potentially leave your family. So everyone's looking at him. They're like, yeah, we're here to support you, Muncie, but you are wilding out a little bit. So he doesn't want anyone to hear it, but they get interrupted because one of Isaiah's security guards comes in and says that we got some blue outside, meaning police. The police come over and they're talking to Isaiah, but Isaiah plays it cool. I already told you how he's connected. He's saying, listen, I don't want the city to take my building. I don't want none of that, but I haven't heard from Muncie and this would be the last place he would be. I would be darned if I ate in the bed, a fugitive of the law, but they're saying they have a warrant and now they're about to search the whole building. We know that the cops play a dirty game. They have their dirty tactics. So what do they do? They go straight to Demetrius and they start getting in his head because while they have this search warrant, they can definitely be in here doing all the talking and searching that they need to do. So she starts saying, where's your dad? Did he run out on you? Did he leave you? And Demetrius starts to tear up. Now, Elena is saying, don't talk to the police. That's what her mom always told her. But she's just letting the police talk to Demetrius. You know you can take Demetrius outside. This search warrant doesn't mean you have to stay in the building. But she lets the cops continue to put that pressure on him while he's tearing up. Well, Muncie has a plan to set up Julia. He's been talking with Callie, and now he wants to meet up with her take this Thule and try to get her on a recording of her talking about Robert and it can go ahead and exonerate him because they do have the keyboard, well to the laptop, which has all the files on it from Laura because they took it out of the car. Now this is after the wreck happened and everything is going according to plan right now. Muncie takes Julia into Chili's. Now I haven't been to Chili's in a while, but they go in there, they order two ginger ales and some wings boneless wings at that. I don't know who orders those, but that's what they did. Now they're going back and forth. They're talking about where they're from. And right now he's telling Julia, listen, I got you where I want you. It's over with. I got this gun on me. You're not going to be able to do anything. I need you to turn state witness, tell on Robert, exonerate me. And then we can both go on about our business and be friends. But what Julia says is basically, this is bigger than you. These people are trying to save the world. Now we have a tie of global warming coming in. But she's saying these people are trying to change the world and save the world. And it's bigger than me. And if I don't get you, someone else will. But remember, she only has 48 hours to try to get rid of him. As I told you, they were in Chili's. Well, Callie was sitting outside in the getaway vehicle. Now, what she does is she slashes the tires on Julia's car and the tire in the spare. She goes ahead and slashes that, but that's where she finds the laptop that I was mentioning earlier. So now we not only have the laptop with everything that Laura Jennings was using, because when she died, no one knew where it was. Even the widow was like, I don't know where the heck it is. But now we also have her on a phone conversation recorded at Chili's admitting that she was after him and she was paid by the other billionaire, Robert. And the last thing we see after this is Julia trying to get her get back. What does she do? Go straight to Isaiah's place. Now, we got security in the front and security in the back, but it's really just some of his old homeboys and they aren't paying too much attention. He's outside with a throwback Philly 76ers hat on, smoking a cigar, leg crossed, just chilling. Well, Julia got that silencer on her tooling. And what is she doing? She's sneaking up. She's going for that attack because she's not giving up. And this is the first 24 of those first 48 hours. All right, there you go. The recap of episode seven. Let me know what you think. Is Muncie going to get away with this? Because he is collecting all this evidence, but this is a lot of work to be running around, trying to get information on one person that is tied to another person that's tied to two, three more people. It's a lot of work. I probably would have gave up. I probably would have been locked up right now, guys. 
I'm sorry, it would have been over with for me. But let me know what you think. I'm Modi J. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for the finale. Eight days, eight recaps of the madness on Netflix. I'm Modi J. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.